All right, we're finally ready to introduce crystal field theory and how it can explain the colors of transition metal complexes. So crystal field theory is a model of the electronic structure of transition metal complexes. It considers how the energies of the d orbitals of the metal ion are affected by the interactions with the donated pair of electrons of the ligand. And so uh, here is a picture of the model to the lower left here. And that model has, uh, for an isolated atom or ion, uh, five of the d orbitals. And uh, in our next example, they're going to be 3D, but they could be 3D, 4D, or 5D. But they're usually, or oftentimes, 3D for us. So it will always work the same. So, and we're used to this. And you can draw them as lines, or you can draw them as boxes. We're going to start drawing them as lines after this, but I'll just make them boxes there. And what we're saying under crystal field theory is that uh, when the ligands and their pairs of electrons approach the metal ion, that, uh, uh, that there is going to be a splitting. So uh, electron pairs from ligands. make some of the d orbitals have higher energy than others. And what we're going to see is that the, the arrangement of the d orbital is going to depend on the type of, um, on the coordination number and the geometry. So, and what I'm trying to show here and, uh, on the right here is that you have at the center, you have the metal ion and you've got the uh, one, two, three, four, five of the d orbitals, right? There's always five d orbitals. And we're placing the elect the um, uh, the little dots on the outside edge, and so let's go with pink for those. Are going to be the uh, electron pairs uh, from each ligand. Ligand, and where these are closer to the d orbitals. They're going to have higher energy, and that's why dxy squared and dz squared have higher energy. And you can see that down here with dxy and all the ones at the bottom, there's a little more space between the d orbitals and the pair of electrons from the ligand. That little more space, you can imagine, is if you bring a pair of electrons from the ligand closer to where the electrons are in the d orbitals, electrons repel each other, and that's going to make those orbitals higher energy. Uh, the ones on the bottom are the lower energy because they're farther apart. So let's say uh, closer for the top and farther. And farther equals lower energy. Lower energy. Because it's an electron electron, both being negative, repulsion. So lower energy, and that's due to electron electron repulsion. And electron electron repulsion is something we've seen before. Um, so electron electron repulsion is what makes each of the shapes, say tetrahedral or trigonal planar, or all of the electron geometries. The electrons are trying to get as far apart from each other as possible. And that's what we're seeing here due to electron-electron repulsion. Okay. So octahedral is going to have the splitting that I'm, oh, I didn't talk about this little thing here. Delta O is the crystal field splitting energy. And as we'll talk about, the crystal field splitting energy and exactly how big it is 
uh, depends on the ligand. As we'll see. And I realized that as we talk about all this stuff with the crystal field theory and the electrons, that we're sort of introducing a number of concepts simultaneously telling partial stories. Uh, let's see how it goes. But, um, but delta O is a crystal field splitting energy. Oh, and last thing to explain, I think, might be these symbols here. And these symbols here are something that we don't have to know, but they do show up on the graphics that I uh, borrowed from the internet. And they are molecular orbital theory notations. And we didn't even talk about them in Gen Chem 1, at least in my sections of it. We won't talk about them here. If you want to talk about them more, um, just let me know, and we can, we can do a deeper dive into it. All right. So... Um, here we go to the next one. It says, what is the shape and electron configuration of nickel with six ammonia groups attached to it? And this gets specific. Um, and it will turn out that, again, we're telling part of the story here. But now that we have nickel, we know that nickel has uh, nickel atom, has argon, and it has uh, 4s. 2, 3, D, 8. Ammonia is a neutral molecule, so this 2 plus charge has to belong to the nickel. So we'll now do nickel 2 plus ion. And we get 3, D, 8, because we always take away the electrons from the highest principal energy level first. That means we have 8 electrons, and if this was just the nickel 2 plus um, ion, so before crystal field theory, we would do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, how do we do it for this one? Well, um, this is going to be before CFT or before ligand. Good. And this is going to be after ligand because the ligands in these pictures over here, same as the last page, show how they approach the nickel 2 plus 3D orbitals. Um, and what we're going to say for this one is that um, we're going to put them in, let's say this. So let's just put them in. Oop. I got it. All right, so we got one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is one of the ways that we're going to put them in. Uh, we'll talk about uh, different ways of doing that. But now this would be how you would put the electrons in according to crystal field theory. And uh, as we said, we'll talk more about the crystal field splitting energy in a few minutes. Our story is building. <laughs> 